Today, I'd like to talk about three specific reasons why you should not think of the Philippines or really anywhere abroad as a retirement plan. So let's just jump into that. The first reason why you should not even be thinking about retiring abroad in the Philippines or Thailand or Cambodia or anywhere outside of your home country is if you do not have a source of income. Now, a source of income can be money that you're getting, say, for instance, rental income. You purchase some homes, you rent them out, you got money coming in every month, and even after paying your mortgage or whatever, you've got enough left over that you could live on. For others, an income might be investments that pay dividends on a regular basis, but for most, it is retirement income, a pension that you may have gotten from your job, either working for the government or the military or as a police officer, and you're able to retire and collect that pension, you've got money coming in. So if you do not have income, I cannot emphasize strongly enough, do not try to live abroad. I just spoke with somebody about four days ago, and he's got a buddy who already moved to the Philippines with some savings in the bank, and his plan was, well, once I get there, I'll figure it out. I'll come up with a way to make some money. Well, now that guy has learned the hard way. There are no jobs for foreigners in the Philippines. Yeah, maybe if you're a highly specialized accountant or something, you could land a job. But if you're talking about a job that's going to actually pay your bills and make you about 1500 US dollars a month, forget about it. And if the plan was to make some money online, a smart person would actually begin that online income before moving to live abroad. And there are not many ways to do this. Usually it involves a lot of planning, a lot of time. Usually in order to create online income, it takes a bit of investment and it also takes some time to get it off the ground. So now this guy's buddy has exhausted all of his different options and he is now grasping at straws thinking he can support himself by starting a YouTube channel. Now the reality is, even best case scenario, you start a YouTube channel that gets regular views, which many do not. All you have to do is look at all the plethora of expat channels about the Philippines and even Thailand, Cambodia. They have been online for over a year. They still are not monetized. They still have not even gotten more than 500 subscribers and they haven't even come close to the 4,000 hours needed in order to become monetized. Now, best case scenario, if you have, say, for instance, a slightly good start, you might become monetized within five to six months. But all that means is that it'll be another two to three months before you get your first $100. So you're looking at the first eight months making maybe $100 to $200. That is not a viable plan. Don't make the mistake of looking at channels that are really big and saying to yourself, oh my gosh, they must be just rolling in the money. Well, yeah, they probably are. But if they also have top-notch content. They know what they're doing, and they did not do it overnight. They themselves, even with great content, spent six to eight months before they really got off the ground, even pulling in three to $500 a month. So do not think that you're going to support yourself with a YouTube channel. If you want to do it as a creative process or as a hobby that pulls in a few dollars, fine. But have a plan for income because if you do not, if you do not have income and you move overseas, you are living live without a net. Like a trapeze artist with no safety net, there's not going to be social programs to help you out with men's shelters and free health care. Forget about that. It's not here. This is how you end up seeing guys on Facebook saying, hey, I ran into this 
foreigner, this expat from UK, USA, wherever, can we all pull some money to maybe send him back home because he's living out on the street? That's how that happens. So first reason to not move overseas to Philippines or anywhere else is if you do not have a steady income. The second reason you should really reconsider whether or not you're going to move overseas is if part of your plan is to find a really good woman. Now, it is true. There are many great, wonderful women to meet in the Philippines. But as I have said so many times, you're not going to find them on the dating sites. If all you're interested in is dates with sketchy, questionable women who have an ulterior motive, usually involving getting money from your pocket into their pocket, yeah, you can find dates like that all day long on the dating sites. But if what you're looking for is a good relationship, forget about the dating sites. Don't try to be the one guy in a thousand who found the right woman. Yes, it happens, but guys win jackpots on slot machines also, but it's very rare. If you want a great woman for a great relationship, you have got to get out of your comfort zone, get past whatever trauma you had back in the West, and when you get to the Philippines, forget about the dating sites, go out every day, and if you see a woman that interests you, start a conversation with her, get her number, and start a relationship. That is how you find good women in the Philippines. Women that are going about their day, being busy, doing a job, running a business. This is where you find good women. I can't emphasize this enough. So if part of your definition of success in moving overseas is a great relationship, you need to get out of your shell. I've met so many guys who are just too scared to walk up to a woman and start a conversation. If you're going to tell me, well, I've never been good at that, or I've been shot down too much back home, if you're not willing to do this, if you're not willing to learn a skill and have some trial and error that leads to getting better at it, if you're not willing to try, you're going to end up at the dating sites and you're going to become one more statistic, one more guy that got ripped off by a shady character on a dating site. You have got to get out of your shell, get out there, make some mistakes, and eventually get better at just meeting women in person. Now, the third and maybe most important next to income, the third reason why you should really reconsider whether or not you're the kind of guy to live abroad in another country comes down to your ability to be resourceful. You need to be able to solve simple problems because problems will come up. They will come up in your home country. They will come up when you're traveling abroad. The only difference is at your home country, you can kind of take it easy and figure it out slowly. But when you're living abroad, if you're not good at solving problems, like planning out your flight itinerary. You would be surprised how many guys contact me that don't know how to buy a plane ticket online. Or they know how to buy a plane ticket online, but they buy it with a one-hour layover, and then they're surprised that they missed their flight. Because the first flight landed a little bit late, they got to a terminal they've never been to before, and by the time they got to the gate, it was too late. And then there they are purchasing another ticket or hoping that their ticket was refundable. But it doesn't just end with flights. There are guys who don't know how to find an apartment. And it's a very simple process. You start online with a, a place like rentpad.ph, or you start with Airbnb. You land, you got a place for 10 days. Now, you rent a motorbike, or you talk to guys on the Facebook groups for that city, and you roam around, and you find a good apartment. You might find it roaming neighborhoods. I've done it that way. I've gotten referrals. But you need to get out there and find a deal. You can find such great deals to live. But again, you need to be resourceful. One of the biggest problems that I see 
come up over and over again is guys who move to the Philippines and they have one debit card to access their money. And everything is fine until some ATM machine keeps their debit card or they lose it or it gets damaged and doesn't work anymore. A resourceful person would say to themselves before they got on the plane, I'm going to have at least two or three ways to access my money once I get there. Set up accounts with remittance companies like Remitly.com, World Remit, Wise.com, Western Union, although I really don't recommend Western Union, their fees are kind of high, but have two different bank accounts. So you have two different debit cards. Have a credit card. Have remittances set up online. Have multiple ways to access your money. And all of this comes down to be resourceful. Know how to anticipate problems and know how to solve problems. It also comes down to being responsible. You know you need to extend your visa. Don't blow it off. Don't spend your money and then say, oh, gee, I don't have any money left for paying my visa extension. This is how problems start. So to recap, number one, do not move overseas if you do not have a steady income. Number two, if having a great relationship is one of your goals as you retire in the Philippines, stay off the dating sites and learn, if you don't know how, learn how to approach women because you only need one. You don't need, if you're looking for a relationship, you don't need five relationship options in the same month. What you need is one woman that's worth focusing your time on. And if she turns out to be a dead end, then you go find another one. And number three, learn how to anticipate problems and solve problems. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself stranded at an airport in some other country trying to figure out what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Or you're going to be in the Philippines paying more for an apartment than you should have because you weren't resourceful. You didn't ask other expats. You didn't use Facebook groups. You didn't use what's available to find a good deal on where to live. So I hope that helps you to just take a very realistic, sober look at whether or not you have what it takes to live overseas.